Welcome back to the Bold Life Movement Podcast. You're listening to episode 71. This is Uncut with Kim and Katie B. Aloha. Okay, is this oh, better? so much better. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Good, good, good. Yeah. I love your hair. Oh, thanks. This is called Sorry. Seven Days In. <laughs> this is called Already Showered in My Pajamas, No Makeup On. You can't this tell. Real. And here's why. I see me in your glasses. Oh, do you want me to take them off? Can you see without them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a little bit, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah I usually wear okay. mine as well. The uncut with Kim and Katie B. Um, I usually wear mine as are well. We, why are we on? Or we, we're doing this already? Okay, we're, we're never not. We're on. jumping. Um, right. Okay. And I was like, I don't need to read her anything. And I know what she right. looks like. <laughs> yeah. And, and frankly, maybe it's good you don't have your glasses on <laughs> right now. <laughs> well, I don't know if you've noticed my outfit. No, I can't. is it a robe? It's not not a robe. <laughs> <laughs> it's seven well, thirty by not, time. Not it's not early. A bra. <laughs> yeah, well. that makes two of us. <laughs> I was like, mm, no, <laughs> just no. I'm no, just I could good. barely. I feel like I should do some voice warm-ups or something. I could barely get this butter coffee in my hand and this robe on say, quick what enough. What is that? Oh, this is my friend John Band's company, Grass, Grass-Fed Coffee, hopefully becoming a sponsor soon. <laughs> it's Looks absolutely amazing, Kim. Tell me what's in it. <laughs> so I had him on like episode two or something. We'll definitely mm-hmm. link that in the show notes. Mm-hmm. But basically... They made a version of bulletproof coffee or butter coffee, which I think is what I'm legally supposed to say. And mm-hmm. it's cold and you can take it with you. And it's delicious. I don't know if this is in the shot, yeah. but yeah. I'm surprised the butter doesn't get solid. They spent, I think he said like $50,000 in R&D to ensure that that didn't happen. What the fork? That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's, so, wow. That's dedication. We'll definitely have a link to that in the show notes as well. Yeah. Hopefully yeah, becoming yeah, yeah. an affiliate link soon. You can really see just like my sweat situation, how dewy I am right now. I mean, I'm so dewy. <laughs> I'm but so, like it's freaking, I'm so glowy. It's always hot here. It's always, I'm not complaining. I'm complaining a little bit, but it's quite warm. It is interesting that... In a lot of parts of the world, a lot of parts where I know people currently, there's snow. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that is weird to think. That is weird to think. And it happens often. I feel like the spring is like, yeah, it kind of plays a little bit. Like it's, you know, it I have says a it's going to be there, but then it's Mm-mm. not. She's a big old tease. I have a friend who was trying to get me to come to Denver for my birthday because he said that we could go snowboarding. And I was like, <gasps> snowboarding? But it, it's summer. Because in Austin, it's like basically summer. Yeah, when you sent that video of the, what's it called? The Barton the, Springs. The Springs, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this looks like summer in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm going to go back today, actually. Very nice. Good mm. plans. Good plans. Yeah, a oh, little... So here we are. A little ecstatic dance to start the morning, actually. Did you do ecstatic dance already? No, 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 no. no. What I say? I could barely put on this robe. <laughs> You're like, baby hold steps. the phone. <laughs> no, baby after steps. we wrap up, I'm going to ecstatic dance with a mutual friend of ours. What? Mm-hmm. Who's the mutual friend of ours? Matthew. Oh, Matthew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's in town. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Okay. The man with the, I'm not going to say it. Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for you to tell me Great online what you're guy. going to Great. say. No, I like Matthew a lot. He's a cool guy. He's Don't worry. He definitely straight. doesn't listen to the show. <laughs> I, and I also feel like you and I are just so slow to go right now because it's like late for me. It's what time is it? It's like 8.51 p- in the p.m. here. And usually this is when I'm getting into like bed no word of a lie the other night I was like oh F like it is tired I'm tired and I got into bed I like opened my Kindle and I was like 
wait, what time is it? I look, it was like eight (laughs) o'clock. Not seven. I mean, no, it was like eight. And I was like, oh, I was, I felt like I should get up and start doing something. Then I was like, fuck it. This is it. This is bedtime right now. Hey, that's a really good segue actually, because all I could think when you were like, I feel felt like I should fill in the blank Mm. was says who? Yeah. 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 Your life. Exactly. Yeah, it is. It is really funny uh, <laughs> that we're doing it at this time because I'm so not a morning person and you're so not a night person. But no, that means yeah. I get that like good morning daylight. It's yeah, that's true. <laughs> and I get that like sexy evening. If you guys Dusk. are watching the video of this, you should watch the video. It's somewhere on Kim's yeah. website. Dot, dot, Neither dot, of us are wearing more. bras. And <laughs> <laughs> that should be it. Uh, well, I mean, okay. I don't know. That's all you need to know. It's intriguing enough that you might want to check it out. Kim's in a robe. How often do you get to see that? Mm. Mm -mm. Well, we could, you know, for the benefit of the listener, dive into what we're going to be talking about today. Yes, 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 yes. So we were chatting a little bit about this offline yesterday, and it wasn't what we'd originally planned to talk about, but it was going on for both of us, so it felt appropriate and timely because I know that it's a universal thing. Do you want to intro it for us? Yeah, so we were talking essentially about pivoting, so changing your life situation and um, say like you're you're going a certain direction in your life and maybe you've put a lot of time into this and it's become a, your identity a little bit, like a part of who you are and then you're like, you know, this is who I am and then you start going this way and you're like, actually, mm, I don't know and then you do something completely different or you make that switch and there's a lot that's wrapped up into that like this should I be doing this and like I've done this already multiple times and well this is my thought process I'm like gonna be 30 soon and am I making yet another switch like I thought I was done with this shit you know like that's that's our prerogative as millennials by the way we're teaching the older generations you don't have to keep doing that just because you've been doing it for 40 years yes life is short yeah, and it, it really is like a mental barrier, I feel like, for the older generation because that's just the way that things were done and, and things still are done to like a large degree, but yeah. it's starting to shift quite a bit where like this, the next, the, these past couple generations have kind of, they're, they're switching it up a lot. Yeah, well, I feel like. another, another, I don't know what the right word for this is, but another theme or area in our life that we were talking about these pivots is our business. And, yeah. you know, for a lot of people, it could be career, it could be relationships, it could be where you live, what you're studying, what you're creating. And for me lately, the way that it has manifested is I didn't put a podcast out for, I don't know, a few months, you know, in, mm-hmm. in between the seasons. And, and I didn't really feel like deciding when season three was going to start because I wasn't clear yet on what that meant for me and what it meant for the bold life movement. And you said that you had a similar feeling come up with your podcast. And I had, I told you I had a friend text me yesterday saying she had a very similar thing come up in her business. So it felt Mm. appropriate to at least address this phenomenon. Yes. As I'm wiping like the sweat away from my, it's like constant. (laughs) Um, She doesn't have air conditioning by the way. I don't have, yeah, yeah, I don't have AC. So it's like 30 degrees in here right now. Um, Yeah, I just, well, okay. Personally, I've just gotten to this point where I'm just exhausted Mm -hmm. and uh, uninspired and unsure. And it's kind of uh, like you were talking about the shoulding. is like a feeling like I should keep going. But when I think about it, it's like, ugh. I, I I don't want to put something out there unless there's that I feel like it's the it's something good and it's something worth people spending their time on. I don't want to put shit out there and I don't feel good about it. Therefore, yeah. like why would I do that? But there's a voice in my head that's like, well, you know, the greats like Tim Ferriss and Pat Flynn and all these people who are highly successful in the podcasting world, they put an episode out come hell or high water. I think there is something to that, but I also think there's something to 
listening to um, your own needs and where you are in your life. And sometimes you need to hit the pause button for yeah. like a quick moment. And it's tough though, because it does come with a lot of questioning because our society today is like, go, 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 like balls to the wall 24 seven, like, y- you know, and it's just like, you know, especially women, like we're not made for that and no. life happens. And it, and another thing that I wanted to bring up too, my sister said this to me on the phone the other, I don't know, the days are blurring yesterday or the day before the day before yesterday doesn't matter um and she was like you know what you do is a very small part of who you are like Mm -hmm. it's a very small part like it doesn't people get so wrapped up in like what their job or what their career is and you know it's it it's not everything yeah and it's so easy to forget that and to get so wrapped up in it that we forget to take care of ourselves in the process and then you get burnt out Well, I also think that it's important to remember people remember you for how you make them feel. And so if your job, for lack of a better word, is podcasting, creating content, you you have a personal brand or a coaching business or something where you're teaching and disseminating information, if the information or the content that you start to disseminate is you know, weighted with energy of confusion, uncertainty. I don't really feel like doing this. People are going to sense that, Oh, you know, yeah, like 100%. they might not even know it consciously, but they're going to sense it within them that they sort of feel eh after listening to your yeah. stuff. And yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Marie Forleo talks about this, like before you sit down to write a newsletter, before you sit down to write a podcast or a sales page or, you know, record a podcast or anything yeah. like that, get into a good energetic place. And if you're not yes. able to do that because your cup's not full or you're just not inspired by what it is you're creating, recalibrate. Mm. There's a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can totally speak to that. I've recently, um, I have discovered I have adrenal fatigue, which is apparently the ailment of our generation. It's because, a huge topic right now with my friends. Yeah, because we're As going so hard, so fast, and it's fucking stressful. Like, mm-hmm. you're in life, you're worried about, you know, especially the life of an entrepreneur. You don't really always know that your money's going to be stable. Um, and even if you do know if your money's going to be stable, you go into work and you're like, oh, if I get fired, you're kind of feeling like this chronic pressure this chronic stress of life and it's like we we live in a different world where like owning a home is not necessarily a possibility in Vancouver at least it's not um so you're dealing with things like feeling inadequate for where you are at at your point of life and like you know for myself it's like I'm 30 and you know it's it's not not in my realm of possibilities to be owning a home this year and you know what I mean like these they're just these pressures uh, and our bodies are not designed for this fast pace. So it will, we will burn out. And, yeah. and I've been dealing with that. I, I finally realized, okay, I have adrenal fatigue and I've taken some shifts with my diet. I've cut out sugar and I've added a bunch of other supplements, which we can talk about too. But I realized that I need I to we just, we should, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that right after this. Um, I realized that I needed to press the pause button for fucking serious for at Mm -hmm. least a month because I was burning out my body and once your adrenals go I have a background in nutrition so there is some like knowledge behind this but once your adrenals go your thyroid is very shortly after and once your thyroid goes you then you you know I think there is still a way to heal your thyroid but you could potentially be on like thyroid hormones for the rest of your life or you can get hypothyroid which means like you gain weight like very easily and you're just not yourself. And once yeah. your hormones start getting messed with, it's a dangerous, dangerous game. Yeah. I actually so, have a friend, Kevin Crenshaw, who's going to be on the podcast soon. And yeah. he's a health and fitness coach. Wizard. I mean, um, yeah. Among many other yeah. things. And he just this past week decided to quit pre-workout cold turkey. And he's taken it every day for like years. What's pre-workout? It's essentially, and my listeners can totally butcher me for this but it's basically like caffeine combined with other stimulants to help you feel like right before a workout 
totally like over the counter legal. It's not steroids by any means. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But still there intense. Are, there are varying forms, yeah, and you feel yeah. it in your body such that you want to go just lift like the heaviest shit, and Ooh. and he's like, it's not good for your adrenals. I decided just this past week, cold turkey to cut it out. And I was like, yeah, whoa, because I've traveled with Kevin. I know him personally. And yeah. when he has led us on some group workouts, him and mm-hmm. everyone else, or he and everyone else, was were taking it before the workout. So that's really crazy because, and uh, one of the things with this adrenal fatigue is that caffeine levels, and there's a, a, a slope to which your cortisol should go throughout the day. It should start off high, so when you wake up in the morning, you're like boom, 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 ready to go, mm-hmm. and then it should like slow down so that when it's bedtime, you're like. I'm like ready to hit the sheets, but yeah. our cortisol slopes are so messed up and it can even make it more messed up when you're having coffee. I, I think the book I'm reading, Dr. Do, 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 his book is the adrenal reset diet. Mm. Uh, and he's very like, there's so many of these doctors I've read like all their freaking books to the point where it's not healthy. Like I know too much. It's not healthy. Like, yeah. truly. <laughs> but he is one that that, is a thing. out of all the ones. Uh, yes, it is a real create thing. before Another you thing. consume sometimes. Yes. Um, yeah. So anyway, so he he's a good guy, but he talks about that coffee before nine is okay, but usually for people, but any anything later in the day, it will mess up your cortisol levels. And yeah, so that. it's quite powerful stuff. What if but you're not on, awake on, before nine? Well, <laughs> Kim, come on. If you're not awake, then no coffee. Uh, dot, dot, dot. That, does, that does lead me to just you know, want to reiterate why butter coffee or bulletproof coffee is beneficial. Do you, are you familiar, Katie? I feel yeah, like you it, it's, it's slow release, right? Yes, like the caffeine the is not, yeah, because of the, the fat content. Right. I feel like though I should also say not everyone is so sensitive to coffee or caffeine. Like I'm super, super sensitive. Mm-hmm. So the, for me, I've cut it out completely. You too. Okay. Oh yeah. But some One people, they can plenty. handle it. Right. And and sometimes it's not the case. Like sometimes people are totally fine, like with coffee and that's, you know, um, I got brunch I've noticed, with a girlfriend yesterday and she had three yeah. cups while we were there and I had half a cup. Oh, F. See, like I used to be able to, I used to do the three cup thing because I just was like, I just like the taste to be honest. Mm-hmm. And I like the smell and the feeling. And so decaf, it's very cultural. What is it? Water press decaf is like, I really am down for that these days. But, um, but yeah, so, so I've cut out coffee or all caffeine that includes like my lovely matcha tea, which I drink, drank every morning, but I feel so much oh. better without it. Yeah. And I've noticed a, a, So I've cut out caffeine, alcohol, sugar, <laughs> so much fun, yeah. gluten, I like, and I can't drink dairy. <laughs> She's the life of the party. <laughs> I eat air. <laughs> it's so delicious and cheap. <laughs> Um, no helps with that entrepreneurial uh, fear of going (laughs) to live on the streets broke (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. selling your Uh, body well and there are people who are breathitarians but that's a whole different did you know that I did know that I actually just talked about that recently with someone really Mm -hmm. I'm like how how? because we're on the same wavelength oh how are people breathitarians (laughs) I mean both yes we are on the same wavelength (laughs) thought there was a cat at my foot um anyway but i do want to say before we forget because if people are if you are suffering suff, if you are suffering from adrenal fatigue out just there, know you're not um, alone <laughs> number one you're not alone and what, some things you can do is uh, the adrenal reset diet book is amazing it's not like it's it's a really really helpful and he's transformed a lot of people with adrenal fatigue and i've yeah. already noticed a difference and i've been on it for like four days so that's says something really yeah um and as far as, so caffeine and sugar are big culprits and making sure that you eat your carbohydrates at the right time of day. So in the evening, uh, and some supplements that are really, really good, uh, some healthy ones is, um, licorice root. Uh, oh, what's that one? Ash mm-hmm. It's an adaptogen. Ginseng is really good. You can get adrenal like combination stuff. Um, Make sure you have your B vitamins. B12 is really good. So if you're vegan, you need to be having like the B12, um, something for your liver and uh, magnesium also. These, these are these are things, just a few sounds things. Like a lot. It is sounds like a lot. What if it really is and a probiotic. Sorry, always, always probiotic. 
Question from someone who hates pills. Yeah. What if you hate pills and you don't want to take all these pills every day? How do you, you get hate- all the things you're missing? Yeah, that's tough because some things like, and this is turning into a nutrition thing, which I love talking nutrition. So useful, but yeah, very useful. Some things that block, um, some things just aren't in the foods as they used to be because our soil is depleted. Magnesium is one of those things. And we're also not eating enough by the time, like we're not eating enough of the natural foods. We're not getting the dirt under our fingernails, which ends up in our mouth, which so means we're not getting the right probiotics and all this stuff. So if you don't like pills, Unfortunately, for some things, it's just not. It. I mean, you can get magnesium from other sources. Like yeah. there's magnesium in dark chocolate. I have an oil too. Oh yeah, I've never tried the oil. But yeah, I uh, have it and I've never tried it. I mean, there's a really good magnesium powder called F. What's it called? I don't know. It's this magnesium powder, and you you put it into like hot water, and it becomes like this yummy tea kind oh. of thing. Which is, and they have like lemon flavors, and I'll, I'll remember that name. Okay. Uh, nope, I thought it was there. Mm. It's not there. Um, but if you don't want to take any pills at all, what I would recommend, in a minimum, is a probiotic and something to help your liver. If you could take those two, if and those two, and then to cut out sugar those would be three things that i would say would baseline help anybody feel better when you say cut out sugar does that mean like ketchup yeah any added sugar so like i've cut out all the sugar i have minimal fruit i'm just trying to go like real do this like real hardcore yeah but that being said i have this I'm out. not cutting out carbs. I'm I'm eating carbs still because you you do need carbs. Your adrenals, it's good to have carbs, um, but but sugar is in freaking everything. Like salad know. dressing, ketchups, like even like curry. Like the other night, I asked mm. the guy who was a cook at the Warung, which is like a restaurant, restaurant essentially. Yeah, uh, and I was like, "Is there sugar in the this dish or whatever?" He was like, "Oh yeah." He's like, "You need me to take it out?" I was like, "If you can, that would be like next time when I get it would be great." Because, and they were like, "But it's brown sugar," and uh, in my nutrition mind, it's like it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's agave. It doesn't matter if it's brown sugar. And you know all these sugar additives. But that's what it means: is cutting out anything that has added sugar, which essentially means all processed food. So then that you're healthier just by default, you know, I know. Not, yeah, I think I admitted to you and I say admit intentionally that I had Ben and Jerry's this weekend. Did I talk to you about this? Oh, yes. Yeah, I think I think you did. Maybe you didn't, but I think you did. It was a whole scene. And yeah. it's so interesting because I remember a time where I would have Ben and Jerry's often among uh, yeah. many other things that tasted good <laughs> and felt like shit. Yeah. And I even, uh, you know, I even had some beers recently and I love beer, but my body is loving beer less and less and less because it feels terrible later. And same with the Ben and Jerry's. I felt like crap afterwards. You froze. Is that bad? Did I lose you? Things I used to love growing up. I mean, not growing. I wasn't having beers growing up. A little bit. But (laughs) when I was five. (laughs) Love a good Guinness. So things that I used to love, I my body is now recognizing more and more that it doesn't want it. So I literally don't enjoy consuming it. Like I got a flight of really quote unquote tasty beers the other night at dinner with a friend. And I couldn't finish it at all because I was like, it's going to make me feel crappy. It's kind of already making me feel crappy. And and then obviously the Ben and Jerry's was a very similar experience. And I don't want to sound like, oh, we're so healthy that we don't (laughs) enjoy, you know, life. No, but dairy and that amount of sugar, it's not good. And your body doesn't like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and the less you eat it, the when you do eat it, the worse you feel. It's like really I exactly. think you build up a tolerance to these things. 
Food. Yeah. I mean, I and I told a friend, I was like, I probably haven't had ice cream in like six months. And before that, it was probably yeah. six months, you know, aside from like yeah. a little dollop. Here and there. Yeah. Psh, it's all good. But like, and that's like the same for me. I was thinking I was feeling fine. I was having lots of sad moments eating cake and chips and beer by myself here in Bali, like nursing my broken heart. So typical. I was mm-hmm. Bridget Jonesing it up like like oh, you wouldn't believe. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. So and hard. I it became my normal. That way of feeling became my normal so slowly to the point where I was like, uh, oh, I feel like absolute shite. And mm-hmm. then I stopped all of that cold turkey, all that stuff, and I was like, Oh, this is what a functioning human feels like and it's quite it's quite amazing. Yeah. And it and it is amazing too, like how you said, you know, we're not healthy all the time, but like why why should we feel shameful about being healthy? Like why not? Like I I know it can garner some hate from people being like, Bleh. maybe they're sitting in their car drinking like a Coke or sorry if like that's you in this moment, but like but and that's another thing, that's another should, right? Like, you know, that you know, I don't know. That's my rant for the day. I know, I feel you I feel where you're coming from on that because I think it's kind of easy for us to get on our little soapbox and be like, but seriously, soda, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then at the same time, we're like, do you? (laughs) I know, right? It's a little contradictory, but (laughs) (laughs) that's that's uncut with Kim and Katie (laughs) B. This is the hypocrite's hour. (laughs) We should change the name. No, but it's show. We can do whatever we want. Life is so so what you know it goes back and forth like yeah. th- there are moments where in everyone's life where you're you're going to be healthier than others like that's just life well, I think yeah. what happens for me at least is like I get super healthy and then it goes on for a while and then I'm like oh it's a party I'm going to just have like a cake and a wine and then the next I'm like oh you know what I thought it really was good I'm gonna and then so goes down the slope into like wine all the time and like chocolate every night and then you get fed up with yourself and you make a change and that's I mean that's life yeah to some degree that's balance I feel like that applies to not just diet but career relationships it's like you let yourself go through these seasons until Mm -hmm. you get Mm -hmm. to a point where you're like I have enough leverage that I feel shitty enough to stop yeah like yeah enter the cleanse yes and that's what uh (laughs) I feel like I'm bringing up Abraham Hicks in every freaking conversation I have, every podcast. But that's what she talks about is contrast. Yeah. It's like in life, we can't be mad at ourselves for the contrast. We can't be mad at ourselves for taking a break or for, you know, doing something healthy or not healthy or being in a relationship with a certain person and then no longer being that relationship or being single or being married or having kids. Whatever the F is going on in your life, good or bad, whatever perspective you spin on it, it doesn't matter because it's all eventually helping you either learn yes or no to what you want or don't want in your life. And it's all a culmination. If it was always good, we would never grow. Like we would never we wouldn't even get up and walk as the babies. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if we wouldn't have to. So so it's good. Well, the contrast is good. And if it's a it was bitch always also. good, <clears throat> you wouldn't enjoy the good because that's the baseline. Yeah. I think Elizabeth Gilbert talks yeah. about the spectrum of emotion. And I love that concept mm-hmm. because I very much as an HSP uh, swing. HSP? Highly sensitive person. Oh, wow. I did not hear that. I was like, oh, I thought we tech? talked about that. I mean, we've, I've never heard that abbreviation. You just, that was so cool. You just dropped that. Just anyway, <laughs> go on. You, you're spinning in the pendulum. I'm, yes, I definitely swing from end to end on that pendulum. But I have friends mm. whose lives are such cakewalks that I don't so think they get to experience the highs. Mm that I that I have experienced and of course that's you know an outside but everyone's life kind of looks like a cakewalk from the outside it's what we see anyways right I there are a couple and I mean very 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 few where literally they've yeah. never had like tragedy they've never had heartbreak right. they've never had financial right. struggle right. right the things that yeah 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 some mm-hmm. some heavy kind of and you know their time will come 
or maybe maybe their lesson is that to experience a life with very minimal struggle is struggle in itself Mm -hmm. because you're missing a lot you know what i mean boom yeah drop that um but if i could drop this mic i would (laughs) but it's kind of scrappy um but yeah (laughs) um but yeah yeah that was my point you know yeah struggle is not it sucks when you're in it it sucks it sucks all the sucks but but it's kind of good if you can use it if you can use it which reminds me of a book i've been reading listening to which has been super helpful just as like to talk about this book but have you read it it's called the obstacle is the way by um it's ryan holiday, ryan right? holiday. yeah you he's a local are you serious mm-hmm. oh wow okay. yeah i'm gonna get to austin you do you didn't get like to it. austin <laughs> no i, I actually like... haven't read the book oh okay, okay i okay, know okay. of it i haven't read it do you want to give us like a okay. little bit of a synopsis synopsis yeah it's it's good it's i was surprised at how much i liked it because it's a sound it's very masculine oh yes to, like, his for, style like, is a better word yeah it's kind of like this is your obstacle you got to turn your shit around you got to use it as like so essentially he talks about using the obstacles as fuel if mm. i could put it into like a very succinct sentence and he just talks about how how you do that and like examples of people who have done that and and how like you know you got to have a process you got to you know do, it's just very if you find yourself overwhelmed and you find yourself in a position where you're like a shitty thing just happened to me read this book mm. cry get all the you know get emotional but when you're ready to, to kind pick your, of pick your pants up a little bit pick, pick your pants up off the flow then read this book <laughs> oh the internet yeah, you can also read choppy. it without your pants on no no mine's super clear on this end you look clear as a you're as pixely a and i can't hear you red long commercial mm. oh no really yeah oh, oh is it getting better let's see yeah, it's been clear for me the whole time. Yeah. Let me try calling you. Not getting better for you. No, also my hair. Uh, yeah, let yeah. me try calling okay. you. So I think that that is super relevant to the pivot conversation that we had intended to have on this call. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. You know, it's our podcast. We're going to pivot away from the pivot. But yeah, 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 yeah. you know, it's, it's all perfect, a- actually. It is. It's <sighs> we planned that very meta. It's. <laughs> It's all a process and a practice of listening to your own intuition, not getting dragged up in the shoulds, appreciating Mm. when shit hits the fan a little bit and realizing that that could be a great opportunity for having one door close and another door open. You know, I, I think I told you at some point in our brief, but beautiful friendship that when I first moved to Austin, I was fired and broken up with all in the same week. And I had moved here and moved in with my boyfriend. So I was very much like WTF world. What the hell am I supposed to do now? And how am I going to afford it? (laughs) Yeah. 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 I was in a similar position Mm, and figure shit out. That was before the Bold Life Movement that led me to the Bold Life Movement. Beyond grateful for all of that now. So it's a matter of cultivating that mindset that even when the shit comes, it's temporary. And if there's, you know, if your new base on your new default has become low energy, not feeling good, not feeling inspired, understand there's a way out of that. And there are processes you can take yourself through getting a coach journaling going on a trip mm. getting a new environment Talk with people. yeah Talk with people about how you feel. not to the point where you're creating this like rock hard story now about like who you are as you're this low energy person but like get it out yeah and feel the support from people around you and one thing i found incredibly helpful is like be where you're just be wherever the f you are if you are feeling like a sad bag of potatoes and all you want to do is like lie around and cry and feel bad about for yourself and do it do it 
do it until yeah. you get sick of yourself and you let will. yourself. Yeah, because when you try to push in the opposite direction or push yourself beyond what your process is at the moment, you will come back to that exact spot, I can guarantee you, and you will have to do it. So just do it when you feel it and yeah. trust that you're not going to be in the dark shit forever. You will come out, but you have to first get comfortable with that part of life because it is a part as much as the light is. And, yeah. you know, get friendly with it and recognize it won't destroy you. It will just suck for a little for a little while. And then use that shit as fuel. Yes. Y'all. I, am I American now? I said y'all. You are <laughs> embracing the Austin very well. <laughs> <laughs> that was my goal with that little it was, cherry on top. Yeah, it was very natural sounding. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so I do I do think that we should wrap up in part because yes. the Bali internet is shit. T- is ready for bed. And, yeah. <laughs> but I, I want, since we asked our questions, our typical episode questions last time, I wanted mm. to know what is one thing that you're going to do for yourself this week that you didn't do for yourself last week? Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. that's a good, that's a good question. I think, yeah, the, the thing that comes to my mind is I think I'm going to, um, take a Pilates class, buy the $140 10 class Pilates pass and just regain my ass. Mm. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> what about you? What about you? Well, I didn't come. You're so prepared. You're such a prepared person. I, you know, um, anyway, so, oh, what about you? Well, it's my yeah. birthday. So I'm actually right today. No, this coming week. Didn't you tell me? But it's coming this week. Okay, I have it on my calendar. That's why I thought it's so weird because I didn't see it today. I can I go, go, go. Can I acknowledge that we are one in the same though? If someone, I had I had multiple friends do this to me recently. They're like, yeah, yeah, it's my birthday today, and I'm blah blah. blah. And I was like, hold the fucking phone. <laughs> We've been chatting or hanging out for like multiple yeah, yeah. hours at this point. Yeah. You didn't tell me it was your birthday? Like, if it's your birthday, tell me. I'm, like, yeah. I'm really right good at making it about me. <laughs> no, but it's right. because yeah. I love celebrating people. And I think more yeah. people should it's give other people the opportunity to celebrate them. Yeah, give them that gift. Anyway, y'all. so y'all feel free to celebrate me this week. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So good. Okay. Why don't you tell everyone when your birthday oh. is this going to go out before your birthday? Oh, it will go out before my birthday. My birthday is April 5th. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's a great so, day. Everybody drop a line. Aries all day. So oh, because it's my birthday, I really like to do something different. Like I, I like mm. birthdays to be memorable, not in necessarily we have to have a party kind of way because I actually really don't like parties. If that mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. I don't like big in big gatherings. I prefer intimate, more novel experiences. So I've been racking my brain trying to think of something I could do that is unique. And part of me, because I have this flight pass for a year, is like, why don't you fly to South America for a couple of days? Because are you going to do it? I I don't know. I also have things I got to do. So <laughs> how old? Are you turning? I'm turning 32 years young. Okay. Hmm. I know. It's like, yeah, you should do it. I know. Life is so shizort. I know. You gotta do it. Or don't. Because you shouldn't shit all of you. Yes. <laughs> you know? Wow. But that would be pretty exciting. Right? It would be so fun. It would be so fun. Or save it for July. Wow. When mm. you come to Vancouver. Well, Vancouver, though beautiful, is not in South America. <laughs> what? Hold the phone. <laughs> Hold the phone. <laughs> okay, anyways, let's wrap this up. Um, this has been wonder, wonder, wonderball. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. And Always. sorry for the technical difficulties. Bali life. Yeah. Katie. Yeah, and I'm not going to be here forever. It's going to be way better internet in the future. Yes, for sure. But I'll include, I'll sprinkle some photos of Katie B in the show notes so that you can see with good lighting what she looks like. <laughs> Less pixels, more light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Chico. I mean, also, 
Okay, yeah, we're, we're going to just cut it off right there. Otherwise, this is going to turn into a whole other conversation. Okay. <laughs> the end. Okay. Okay.